our final video of the three-part series on how we can show more respect to health our patients as healthcare professionals. Now, uh, before I start today's video, uh, I have uh, recently realized that I have a lot of new followers. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to my new followers and also express my gratitude for actually seeing the value in what I'm putting out with, the, with my content and also resonating with it and also uh, going on the same journey as me. Now I have got a few DMs on my LinkedIn about uh, some sort of asking questions and just getting to know them better. I will get to them slowly. I, uh, I have a lot of things going on and I will DM my new followers at some point. So uh, just a big thank you to everyone who has been reaching out to me or following me or recommending me. So big thank you for that. Now today's video is going to be elements of it is, are going to be somewhat repetitive because I do mention elements of it. I have mentioned it in my previous videos and in my previous posts. But there are going to be a, a, a series of different spins that I'm going to put in the space of how we can show more respect to our patients as healthcare professionals. Now this applies to every healthcare professional. It's not just for doctors and nurses, it's just for anyone who works in the healthcare space with patients. A lot of my videos I've been told that they are very much focused on doctors and that's really not the intention. Everyone can learn and become better in their practice by the things that we have to do, uh, just developing those soft skills and become better communicators in order to build better relationships and trust with our patients. So let's get straight into it. Now, number one, I would say is obviously, I've preached this to the choir many, many, many times, the importance of acknowledgement and active listening. Now, acknowledgement is something that I mentioned in my last week's video, like a lot of patients, they do want to be acknowledged for what they say, what they do, what they would like to do, how they want the treatment to go. So even if you may not necessarily agree with the patient or their choices or what they would like to do, it's always a good idea to acknowledge what they're saying and say, and just say that, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And also listen actively. I don't think I need to go into any more detail on active listening because I have mentioned it so, so, so many times. It's literally the bedrock of the foundation of my coaching program. Number two, I would have to say is us as healthcare professionals, we need to be a little bit conscious about when we are speaking to a patient, are we doing it or when we are, you know, hearing out or communication, communicating with the patient overall, are we doing it from a place of our own judgments, our own opinions, our own past experiences, which don't really have any factual evidence versus going by what is fact, what is science, what is the truth, what is the universal law. So I have mentioned in my past videos about patient autonomy and patient autonomy is a big area where I see a lot of work that we can do as healthcare professionals and it's also what frustrates patients a lot when they go to healthcare professionals. They feel like a lot of healthcare professionals are assuming a lot of things about this patient based on their age, their ethnicity, their gender, sexuality, whatever. And they are just giving them unsolicited opinions and advice just solely based on that. And also a lot of misinformed and misleading assumptions about them without knowing the truth or without really looking into what the patient is as an individual. So catch yourself when you are speaking to a patient or when you're hearing a patient out, when you're responding to that, are you doing so from a place of just making these preconceived assumptions um, and being judgmental, being, you know, uninformed and just, you know, shoving your opinions down their throat of what they should and shouldn't do versus fact, evidence-based facts, evidence, scientific facts, scientific theoretical knowledge, scientific theoretical tried and proven and tested experiences that will be beneficial to the patients. Number three is I'd like to chime in with my very recent personal experience as a patient and uh, that is to really treat patients as unique individuals with different personalities, needs and uh, requirements and histories and not just pigeonhole them into this one box where every single patient has to be gone into with the same condition. So what I mean by that is that someone like myself who has anxiety is not, my anxiety is very different to the anxiety, another patient who has anxiety. 
Like my triggers are different, what sets me anxious is very different versus that other person. It started off really well and also because someone, I am someone who comes from a healthcare space and I am someone who is, uh, you know, who is a little bit better informed, I would say, than other patients, I would say because of my, obviously my mother's background, so, so I know personally what would work for me and what would not. And we, in our consultations in the past, I have told him many, many, many times to not bring up the past when we have our consultations. So it was about two weeks ago and he gave, brought me out a script for my uh, anxiety medication and you know, fine, I will, I will continue taking that, whatever it is. And you know, he went through his whole standard checklist and at that point he said to me, just in the very end, that uh, does your mother still have your, you know, your previous high school reports and records or primary school reports and records? And I'm like, I asked him, why, why does that matter? goes back to the same old broken record pattern and he said oh we want to look at all the past patterns that have made you realize made you you know that have turned you into who you are and i said to him listen while i appreciate that that's what you do with your other patients i'm aware of what my triggers are i'm aware of what my history is we don't need to go through that it's just going to be a waste of time for you and i let's just come up with some strategies to move forward and in the very end, I also mentioned that I don't want to be reliant on my medication anymore and I just want to stop that permanently, which he did not agree with very well. He was like, uh, he was sort of instilling this fear into me that, you know, oh, if you don't take the medication, you're going to end up in the, in the psych ward. Um, that was the final straw for me. And I, as opposed to a, um, a psychiatrist, so someone who's much more holistic and who will hopefully give me the tools and the strategies that I need for my individual personality, for my background, for my history, to help to equip me better on how I deal with situations where I can experience anxiety. Now, I haven't had my consultation with her yet, but I will in a couple of weeks' time, so I will keep you posted on how that's going. So, back to the same thing. Every single patient has different unique needs, unique circumstances, unique uh, bodies, unique symptoms. You have to treat each person uniquely, not just numbers that are cogs in a machine, not just this uh, factory that's producing, you know, mass producing people with patients who have a similar condition. Everyone is unique and you have to treat them, respect them, value them and acknowledge them as unique individuals. Number three. Okay, number four, the big one, and I have mentioned elements of this in the past in my uh, previous videos and posts. Keeping an open mind as to uh, how things can be dealt with for our patients and treat them better in more innovative and holistic methods. So by no means am I dismissing what modern science is, modern, science, modern medicine, modern science is very beneficial and it has its place, but also be aware that a lot of our patients now are quite, are better informed. You know, we have social media, we have a lot of things that make us much more aware uh, and much more uh, better informed of how you know different treatment methods can work for them. Now that has that can be problematic in its own way, and you have to treat that as a case by case basis. So what I'm getting at is that don't just stick to tried and trusted traditional methods of how something has been treated. Again, so uh, it is important for us to be aware as healthcare practitioners that there are out of the box, unconventional, innovative methods that are just as su successful for dealing with and treating our patients uh, and not just, you know, in this whole prescriptive method that was used many, many years ago. So being open to that and working with patients in order to, um, in order to give them the best possible outcome or best possible treatment, that is a win-win situation for both of us. And a final one, I just thought of it right now, the final one I would say would have to be Respect is a two-way street. So whilst it is important that we respect our patients, it also works the other way around. So if you have a patient who is being aggressive, who is being demanding, who is being forceful, who is just being rude and feral, don't take that. You have to set boundaries and tell them that this is not acceptable and unless they speak to you or communicate with you in a respectful manner, they're not, you're not going to give them any service. My name is Shweta, I'm the founder of Healthy Dynamics and we are a coaching practice that helps healthcare professionals from non-English speaking countries improve their communication skills in order to build better relationships with our patients and achieve workplace excellence. So hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and I will thank you for tuning in and I will see you same time next week. Cheers.